Joe Kelly. They're coming onto the track for the $325,000 Windy City Pace. It's the 19th annual edition, 1-1-A, 1-B, coupled in the wagering. No changes. Win, play, show, exact and trifecta wagering on this three-year-old stake. And here they are. One is out of the past, owned by Brian Pinsky Stable, Vernon Shire Racing, Carl Pinsky, and the Pinsky Stable. They are of Illinois and Minnesota, trained by Brian Pinsky, driven by Hall of Famer Dave McGee. Here is one out of the past, starting from post position one. Entry mate, 1A, Cardmaster Hanover, winner of the American National Final at Balmoral Park with a lifetime best, 150 and two. He is owned by the Samson Street Stable, Brian Pinsky Stable, John Fielding, and Peter Heffering. They're of Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Ontario. Trained by Joe Anderson, driven by Andy Miller. Starting from post position five, here's 1A, Cardmaster Hanover. Entry mate, 1B, Hawaiian Cowboy, owned by the Brian Pinsky Stable. R&D Sampson Stable and White Birch Farm. They are of Illinois and New Jersey. Trained by Brian Pinsky, driven by Eric Letford. Starting from post position seven, here's 1B, Hawaiian Cowboy. Two is Rattle and Rock, the only Illinois bred in the race. Winner of the Pete Langley on Super Night here this year. Set a track record and a national season's mark when he won his last race here on October 19th in 152. He's owned by John Leahy, Anderson Racing Incorporated, and John Coleopolis. They are of Illinois. Is trained by Joe Anderson, driven by his son, Ryan Anderson. Starting from post position two, here's the Illinois bred Rattle and Rock. Three is Oaks Enforcer, owned by Towering Oaks Farm Incorporated of Mentor, Ohio. Trained by Scott Cox, driven by one of Northfield's finest, Jim Pantoliano. Here is number three, Oaks Enforcer, starting from post position three. Four is Corporate Raider. Corporate Raider is owned by Daniel and Thomas Kudamanchi. They are of Pinconning, Michigan. Is trained and driven by Peter Wren. Number four, Corporate Raider, starting from post position four. And completing the field is five, Real Desire. Real Desire, winner of the million dollar plus Meadowlands Pace. The $781,000 Breeders' Crown Final, just to name a few, owned by Brittany Farms, Robert Burgess, Peretti Farms, and Karen Olson Burgess. They are of Kentucky, Ontario, and New Jersey. Trained by Blair Burgess, driven by Hall of Famer John Campbell. Here's number five, Real Desire, starting from post position six with career earnings in just two seasons of racing of 2,018,774. That's the field for the $325,000 Windy City Pace here at Maywood Park. You have seven minutes in which, in which to make your way. Three-year-old Pacers, they are at the gate for the 19th annual edition. The gate is rolling. Fields on the turn. Top of the stretch. Here they come. And 
they're off. Fan pacing with Rattle and Rock going for the lead. Real Desire leaves and looks like he might get the pocket as they race into the first turn. Perhaps not. McGee closes up the pocket as they race into the first turn. It's Rattle and Rock with the lead. Real Desire up on the outside in second. Now out of the pass. Gaps in the pocket in third. Campbell sees this and will look to take the pocket. He's taking back. He will get it. It's Rattle and Rock with the lead. Real Desire will get the pocket in second. Followed in third. Out of the pass. First quarter, 27 seconds. And now Campbell elects not to take the pocket, and he moves up for the lead. Up on the outside, Real Desire takes the lead. Yielding in second is Rattle and Rock. Out of the pass is third. Followed in fourth by Oaks Enforcer. It's two and a half lengths. The Corporate Raider in fifth. Two and a half lengths. The Cardmaster Hanover in sixth. And Hawaiian Cowboy is the trailer. Into the stretch for the first time. Real Desire and John Campbell have the lead by two. Rattle and Rock second. 55 and two for the half. 28 and two for the second quarter. They move into the paddock turn the final time. Real Desire by a length and a half. Rattle and Rock is second. Out of the past is third. On the inside, Oaks Enforcer is fourth. Cardmaster Hanover first over in fifth. Brings up entry mate Hawaiian Cowboy in sixth. Trailing on the inside. Corporate Raider. Five sixteenths of a mile to go. Real Desire by a length and a half. Rattle and Rock sticks right with him in second. On the outside in third, that's Cardmaster Hanover. Off stride to the three quarters was Hawaiian Cowboy. Three quarters, 124 flat, 28 and three for the third quarter. It's Real Desire by a length and a half. The Illinois bred Rattle and Rock getting set for the drive in second. A distant third moving three wide is Oaks Enforcer. Those pacers turn for home. Real Desire cuts the corner. Here comes Rattle and Rock, and Rattle and Rock goes right on by the Illinois bred. Rattle and Rock wins it. Real Desire second. Corporate Raider up for third, 151 and four, a new track record for a three-year-old gelding pacer here at Maywood Park. Returning to the winner's circle is number two, Rattle and Rock. Rattle and Rock, the only Illinois conceived and full pacer in the race, is a three-year-old Illinois conceived and full gelding son by Sportsmaster out of the Albatross mare Brenda Royale, is bred by Fox Valley Standard Breds of Illinois, is owned by John Leahy, Anderson Racing Incorporated, and John Coleopolis of Illinois, is trained by Joe Anderson, who's in the winner's circle with the winners, the winning owners, was well driven by Ryan Anderson. Rattle and Rock winning his third in a row, his seventh of the year, his 14th in his two seasons of racing, pacing to a winning mile of 151 and four, and that is a lifetime mark. Making the Windy City Pace presentation, Lester McKeever, president of Associates Racing Association Incorporated, and our race secretary, Doc Narotsky, to Rattle and Rock. Rattle and Rock, the second Illinois bred to win this race in 19 races. The other one by incredible finale back in 1986. And the fifth race is official. The 2.5 exacta, $14.80. 1480 on the 2.5 exacta. The trifecta, 2.54, 100. He came back on the hold, and how, how easy was it to relinquish? Uh, there was probably, uh, I would say, about three lengths behind us, and uh, more or less I made him go on, and uh, I sat the two-hole. He gave me the opportunity to go to the front and whack it out, but uh, I offered not to. Now, when you came out on the turn, on the last turn, I was pretty sure you had a pretty good feeling about this horse. Right. Uh, you know, actually, this horse, he hasn't been set in a hole since Lexington, and I 